Hey guys, it's Alicia and welcome back to my channel. It's June. Um, it's actually almost the end of June and that is mind-boggling to me. It's ridiculous how fast this year has already flown by. Today I'm actually going to be doing a super super fun tag. I saw Angela from Coffee and Chapters do and also Oshina from Oshina Gotta Read Em All. And Oshina officially tagged me in her comments, but I was planning on doing the tag anyways. I thought it was super, super fun. So today I'm going to be doing the mid-year freakout tag. So what I've gathered, this tag is pretty much just kind of recapping your six months of reading so far and kind of getting you anticipated for the next six months. And there are 15 questions, so I'm just going to jump right in so this video isn't super long, though I'm sure that it is going to end up being ridiculously long anyways. Question number one is, best book you've read in 2018? And for this, I chose A Noble Masquerade by Christy Ann Hunter. Of course, I'm just going to put this down, groundwork. There are so many books that I could have used for a number of these questions. I loved this book so much. I've said it before, I will say it again. I totally think that Christy was like looking into my life when she wrote this book and when she wrote the series because I have read a couple of the books in the series. And I just, I loved it. I, it was, I don't, I just, I don't know how to explain, but it was probably one of the best books that I've read so far, and I've read a ton, but this book is one of the reasons why Christy became a favorite of mine. Just amazing. Number two is, what's the best sequel that you've read in 2018? And for that, I went with Out of the Ordinary by Jen Toronto. Again, I could have picked a number of books. I've read some really good sequels to series this year but I remember what I said in my wrap-up when I read this that it wasn't her funniest book and I had a lot of expectations going into this for this being her funniest book yet but it fell short there for me however I love this book because I really connected with Gertrude and I feel like I was so invested in this book that it wasn't just a light quick read for me like her books normally are. It was just a deep, like I was just crazy, like I was reading it and like oh my word yes, I feel you, I get this. And again I laughed, I chuckled because it's Jen, she's amazing, but I was really invested in Gertrude and I really felt like I saw pieces of myself in Gertrude so I feel like it was one of my favorite sequels for the reason of I really felt connected to her and I felt like Jen was writing me in a way you know so whereas Noble Masquerade Miranda I totally saw myself in Miranda she was more the lighthearted self, the laughing, you know, the she was the funny, lighthearted, annoying side of myself. And not that she's annoying, but I'm saying like the lighthearted side of myself while Gertrude was definitely a deeper side of myself and, you know, different things. I don't know how to I hope this makes sense. It's kind of making like I know what I wanna say, but it's not quite coming out how I want it to come out. But I saw myself in both these characters. I love both these books, but for different reasons, and I applaud both both of these authors for finding a way to do that. Number three is a new release that you have not read, but you want to. And I have been beyond blessed recently to get pretty much all of the new releases um, from the publishers and from authors and just different ways so I've actually already read most of the new releases but one that I have not read and it's not a new release I think it came out last year or maybe earlier this year I can't remember see I've read so many books there's so many things coming out 
but that is A Chance at Forever by Melissa Jakers. This is book three in her TiVo Society, TiVo Morale Society series, and I read book one. I have to read book two, but I still need to purchase book three. Um, it's definitely a release that I have to read soon. I love Melissa so, so much. Number four is, what is your most anticipated release for the second half of 2018? There are just way too many books coming out, so I have a number of books that come to mind. But one of them is The Reckoning of Gossamere Pond by Jamie Jo Wright. This is her second book that she's released. She is the author of The House on Foster Hill, and her writing is mind-blowing. It's very outside of my normal comfort zone where I normally read, but it's so, so good. So I'm very, very excited for that to release, and it releases in July, I believe, and I'm so, so excited. Again, there are tons of books releasing. But I was good and I only chose one. But trust me, I wanted to choose many, many more. Number five is Biggest Disappointment. And for that, I had to go with The Accidental Guardian by Mary Keneally. I had so many hopes for this book. I had so many expectations for this book. I really like Mary's writing. Um, I have a lot of her books, but but I was really, really excited for this book. Um, the synopsis was so intriguing to me. Then I read it, and I was just really bummed. I was really disappointed. It did not meet any of my expectations. But I will say that I'm very, very excited for book two, which comes out at the end of this year. And... I'm excited for that, and I'm excited to read that story, but I was just kind of disappointed in how the story was written and how it was taken care of. It was just, it left me wanting more. I'll probably go into a little bit deeper in my wrap-up, but it was just kind of disappointing. I was expecting so much more. Number six is Biggest Surprise, and for that I chose Unblemished by Sarah Ella. I went with this um, because more than anything I was surprised that I read it and enjoyed it because it is YA, and I normally don't pick up YA, but because of it I've picked up a number of YA books. Number seven is Favorite New Author. And I've read so many amazing books by so many new authors this year that I had a really hard time choosing just one. But one of my favorite new authors that I've come across is Jill Lynn. And she is a love-inspired author. She wrote Her Texas Cowboy, which came out in May. And then she also wrote The Rancher's Surprise Daughter. And this comes out in late July, early August. I love her style. I love the stories that she writes. She's just so great. I love how she crafts her stories. So she is definitely a new favorite author. Number eight is New Fictional Crush. And I have so many. <laughs> I read some amazing books with amazing heroes. And I was like, racking my brain trying to decide who I even wanted to talk about because there are so, so many. But for, for this I went with Sir Harold Orwell from Never Borrow a Baronet by Regina Scott. I loved him so much. Um, I love Regina. Um, and I love this new series that she's doing. I'll talk more about the book in my wrap up. But it was so good. And I just loved Harry so much. He was just this. He was trying to play a cad. And he was trying to play this player. But he really wasn't. Um, but it just made the banter and everything great and I just loved his character so much because 
as much as he was trying to put on this persona, he was still a gentleman through and through and such a great guy and such a great character and I absolutely loved him so, so much. Number nine is new favorite character. And for this, again, I've read so, so many good books. So I've fallen in love with so many amazing new characters. But I went with Ambrosia by Bound and Determined by Regina Jennings. And it is a part of the Hearts Entwined novella collection. It is also available in ebook as its own book. This is 1.5. Um, in Regina's Fort Reno series and I loved this book. I really loved uh, Private Bradley as well but I really enjoyed Ambrosia which I was kind of surprised by um, because she's a very snobby character. She's a very cityfied sit character. Um, so I was surprised that I liked her so much, but Regina wrote her to where she was strong, yet still, you know, girly and feminine, and I just really liked her. I liked her banter. She got annoyed really quickly, but she was always had a witty comeback, and I just, I don't know, I really liked her, which I was very surprised by, but she's definitely a favorite character that I've come across. Number 10 is a book that made you cry. And for this, I have two that I'm going to use. I don't cry when I read. Um, I definitely cry when I watch movies. I'm a very emotional person, so I'm surprised that I don't cry when I read. So for these books, I didn't cry, like no tears fell or anything, but my eyes definitely welled up. I definitely got emotional when I read them. And... But I didn't like full on cry. I just, I don't cry when I read. Um, but that's beside the point. I did definitely get emotional and I did definitely well up when I read More Than Meets the Eye by Karen Whitmire. This is her newest book. It just came out. And she is going to kick you right in the feels as soon as you open this book. As soon as you read the prologue, it's just going to like wallop you across the face. Like it's just so emotional and then the epilogue got real like I got really choked up when I read that I definitely got super super emotional when I read the epilogue but in like a this is really sad but still hopeful because we do get a book two to the series so we'll see the continuance but just like the dialogue to it just totally to like Oh man, I was a mess for a couple minutes. I was just like, ugh, it was, it was a lot. And then she had me laughing so hard in this book that I was almost crying. Now that I will do. I will laugh so hard that I cry in books. But there was so much banter and there was so much wit and it was just so funny. And I absolutely loved this book. This was definitely up there with one of the best books that I've read so far in the year. But it definitely brought tears to my eyes. The next book that I definitely got emotional over was Unbreakable by Sarah Ella. I can't say much because it will be a huge spoiler, um, but towards the end I definitely did get very emotional. Like I did have to set the book aside um, for a couple minutes. Again, I didn't cry per se, but I was just so like, what just happened like that did not just happen but it was it was a lot to take in question 11 is a book that made you happy and anytime i read books make me happy i went with the all for love novella collection with books by jen toronto christiane hunter and mary keneally this book made me happy for multiple reasons one i love these authors Two, I've read, I'd read one of the novellas already and I was excited to read the other two. I had them on my Kindle. But three and probably most of all, it's finally in paperback. <laughs> like I was so excited that these stories were finally in print 
and they were combined and put together and this cover is gorgeous stories are gorgeous and I just this book just made me happy the whole entire time that I was reading it number 12 is favorite book to movie adaptation that you've seen this year and I actually have not seen any I know it's crazy I don't watch a ton of movies especially newer movies and I there aren't a whole lot of Christian fiction books that have been turned into movies but one that I am very very anxious and I'm anticipating watching at some point is Once Upon a Prince was turned into a movie based on Rachel Hawk's Once Upon a Prince book and I really do want to see that. It aired on Hallmark in April but I missed it and I was so so bummed. But I haven't read the book yet so I kind of want to read the book and then watch the movie. But that is definitely an adaptation that I am anticipating watching at some point. Number 13 is your favorite review that you've written so far this year. And I write quite a few reviews. Um, I write a review for every book that I read. Not always published on the blog but I always post one on Goodreads. But the one that I'm going to talk about today I posted on my blog and I was, I'm still so proud of this review. Um, it, I think because it came from my heart, it came from a place where it was just perfectly timed and when I wrote it I was just delirious when I wrote it. Um, but I've talked about it before and I'm just, I'm proud of this review for my own personal reasons. And I'm proud of every review that I write because I can literally be in a slump, a writing slump, and just not know how I'm going to explain what I feel about these books. And I just start typing and I promise it's like my mind stops working and God just starts writing for it. Because I'll just be typing, like not even paying attention, I'm like, yes, yes, this makes total sense, yes. And then I'll read it over. I'm like, how did that even happen? Because those thoughts, that's what I was thinking, but that it was in no way how I thought that I was going to be able to explain how I was thinking. Um, so I'm proud of every review that I write. It, if I publish it, I'm proud of it. But definitely, definitely beyond proud of my review for Head in the Clouds by Karen Whitmire. I love this book. This book will always, always, always have a special place in my heart. It's my favorite book by her, I think, besides Short Straw Bride. But when I reread it, I was in a place that I was nannying, and she's a governess, and she was following the will of God on based on cloud. The cloud is a huge part of this book um it's even on the cover and Karen used the story of the Israelites and following the cloud when they were going through the wilderness as a big part of this and I loved it because I was really trying to make sure that I I'm always trying to make sure that I'm in the will of God but definitely when it came to the nannying situation and not being home and then ending the nannying situation like I was just praying God's will the entire time so this book came right when I needed it and I talk about that in my review and then my thoughts just came out so much more eloquent than I ever could have thought that I could do especially at 2.30 in the morning with no sleep and just being ridiculously delirious. I was just very, very proud of the review and I think it's just because it has such a close, close place in my heart. But definitely, definitely my head in the clouds review. If you would like to check out my review on the blog, I will definitely link it in the description box below so you can check it out. Um, but you don't have to, I'm just saying if you'd like to see why I'm so proud of it. I mean, you can. Number 14 is the most beautiful book you've bought in 2018. And again, because I'm working with quite a few people, I have been so, 
so blessed, beyond blessed, to receive um, quite a few books um, in exchange for my reviews. So I haven't bought a lot of books recently. Um, so I'm going to show you one cover that is absolutely beautiful that I received and then a cover that I is gorgeous that I bought. Um, I'm a cover snob, like without, I'm not ashamed of it, I'm a huge cover snob. So I love pretty books and I have a ton of beautiful books and I've received a ton of beautiful books. But one of the prettiest books that I've received so far this year has got to be Unbreakable by Sarah Ella. This cover, when I saw it, when she did her cover reveal for it, I like freaked out. Book one and book two have beautiful covers, don't get me wrong. Each cover goes with the story that is being told and I love that. But something about this cover blew my mind. It is my favorite of the series. The rose, the dewdrops, just how enchanting it looks. I absolutely love, love, love this cover so much. The books that I bought that have beautiful covers, I think these were the last books that I bought recently. Um, I know it's crazy, but that has probably got to be Karen Barnett's books. There is The Road to Paradise with this gorgeous, gorgeous cover and then Where the Fire Falls and this is her newest release and it is a part of a series, the Vintage National Parks series. I'm so excited for it. They're based at the national parks and they're historical and I'm just so so excited to read them and they just have beautiful vintage covers and I feel like these the artwork definitely definitely goes with the story so these are some beautiful covers and I believe that they're like the last books that I bought. And the last question, question number 15, is what book do you need to read by the end of 2018? And for that, I went ahead and chose a nonfiction book and then a fiction book. And for my nonfiction book, it is Brazen by Leanna Tan... Kersley? I've been trying to read this all year and I still have not gotten to it. Still have not cracked open a page, but this is definitely, definitely going to have to be finished before 2018 ends. That is my goal for the year. I just need to finish this book. I need to start the book. I mean, come on. And for my fictional book, it's actually a series. And I'm not sure if I'll finish the whole series before the end of the year, but I really hope that I can. And that is the Hagenheim series by Melanie Dickerson. My sister is actually currently um, reading book one. She took it with her to her trip to Canada. And so I don't have it with me. And then I also need to get The Captive Maiden. And I need to get a new copy of The Princess Spy because mine is literally falling apart. And I haven't even read it yet. The Orphan's Wish is releasing next month, I believe. And then she just released the cover for, I believe it's called The Reluctant Warrior or something like that, which is her Mulan retelling. And I'm like so excited, so excited. So I'm really, really, really wanting to start the series so that I can read them. I've heard nothing but amazing things and I love fairy tales and I love fairy tale retelling. So I'm very excited to dive in and read the series. So that is the end of the tag. I hope you guys enjoyed. It was kind of discombobulated, but all of my videos are. That is nothing new. <laughs> ah! I will leave the questions in the description box. I'm not going to tag anyone um, because most of the people that I know on here have already been tagged. So yeah, I will leave Angela and Oshina's um, videos down in the description box below so you can check out their tags and their answers. And let me know what book are you most anticipating release for the rest of the year. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. You can follow my blog for the love of Christian fiction.blogspot.com where I post every Friday and also going to be posting every Tuesday as well. So, and you can also check out my Instagram, which is for the love of Christian fiction, where I 
post quite frequently. All my other links are in the description box below, and I seriously think that's it. I'll see you guys next week. Bye!